uh, greetings to everyone present here. I am Amisha Mohanty and I'm a student of DRS International School, Hyderabad, India. I'm here to introduce it to all of you. Well, it gives all of us immense pleasure to be present here on such a platform, which gives us an opportunity to build camaraderie as well as co collaborate with people of different countries and speak and share our mindsets about diverse global issues. Well, to introduce my school, um, we are an international school and we have residential as well as day scholars. We have above 1,000 students. We have different syllabi such as CBSE, IGCSE, IBDP, PYP, and CBA, uh, CIE. Apart from studies, we have a lot of extracurricular activities and cultural activities as well. So, well, let's commence. India is an agrarian country with around 54.6% of its people depending directly or indirectly upon agriculture. Greetings to everyone present here. I, Ashika, am the Minister of Agriculture and Farmer Welfare. Ever since independence in 1947, agricultural development policies in India have aimed at reducing hunger, food insecurity, malnourishment and poverty at a rapid rate. India accounts for 17% of world's population. Its size in terms of consumers in, is many times larger than the rest of the countries except China. It is in fact evident that one of the most critical issues faced by the agricultural sector is the vulnerability of food security. India is one of the countries that is worst affected by scarcity of food. It understands the remoteness of the problem and strives to remove it from its roots. Moreover, India has come up with remarkable plans and schemes to overcome the problem. These include a five-fold increase in food grain production from 50 million tons in 1950 to, to about 250 million tons in 2014. India has moved away from dependence on food aid to become a net food exporter. In 2016, the government launched a number of programs a double, uh, to double farmers' incomes by 2022. These seek to remove bottlenecks for greater agricultural uh, productivity, especially in rain-fed areas. They include the National Food Security Mission, Rashtriya Krishi Vikas Yojana, the integrated schemes on oil seeds, pulses, palm oil and maize, Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bhima Yojana, the ENAM, as well as a massive irrigation and water and harvesting programs to increase the country's gross irrigated area from 90 million hectares to 103 hectares by this year. Furthermore, to address the linked nutrition and livelihood challenges in India and to ensure that vulnerable groups are not left behind, the UN Priority Group partners with the Indian government to scale up nutrition services and improve feeding and caring practices in the home. Food security is indeed an important aspect of life. It needs a global approach through which the developed and privileged can support the developing and underdeveloped. Thank you. Thank you. It's time to rethink how we grow, share, and consume our food. Greetings to all. I'm Davina, the Minister of Consumer Affairs and Public Distribution. The Food Corporation of India was set up on 14 January 1965, having its first district office at Tanjavur, a rice bowl of Tamil Nadu, and the headquarters at Delhi under the Food Corporation Act 1964 to implement the following objectives of the national food policy. Firstly, effective price support operations for safeguarding the interests of the farmers. Second, distribution of food grains throughout the country for public distribution systems. Third, maintaining satisfactory level of operational and buffer stock of food grains to ensure national food security. Lastly, regulating market prices to provide food grains to consumers at a reliable price. Sustainable consumption and production is about promoting resource and energy efficiency, sustainable infrastructure and providing access to basic services, green and decent jobs and a better quality of life for all. Its implementations help to achieve overall development plans, reduce future economic and environmental social costs, strengthen economic competitiveness and reduce poverty in India. Sustainable consumption and production aims at doing more and better with less. Increasing net welfare gains for economic activities by reducing resource use, degradation and pollution along with whole life cycle while increasing quality of life. 
talking about PDS, in spite of having a lot of public distribution systems in India, we face many issues in distribution of food grains, such as instances of hunger prevailing despite of flowing granaries, food corporation of India of godowns that are overflowing with grains, the decline of stock fluctuating due to the weather conditions and monetary fund by the government, high level of buffer stock if the food grains go waste, some states benefit from the PDS while the others don't due to malpractices and various other issues. In India, an Aadhaar card is a unique identification card given to every Indian citizen with the biometric data. In order to curb the above issues of the PDS, the National Food Security Act was stimulated, along with linking the Aadhaar card so the PDS helps India to save 10,000 10, crores in its pilot stage. The National Food Security Act 2013 is an act of the Parliament of India which aims to provide stabilized food grains to approximately two-thirds of India's 1.2 billion people. It was signed into law on the 12th of September 2013, retroactive on the 5th of July 2013. The National Food Security Act converts into a legal entitlement for existing food security programs of the government of India. It includes midday meal schemes, integrated children development services schemes, and public distribution systems. Further, the NFSA 2013 recognizes maternity entitlements too. The midday meal schemes and the integrated children development service schemes are universal in nature, whereas the PDS will reach about two thirds of the population, hence helping India to develop. Thank you. Greetings to everyone present here. I am Ria Mandaukar, the Minister of Home Affairs. India has made a tremendous progress in food production due to the introduction of green revolution that had brought self-sufficiency in food. However, there are still many ch challenges India is facing due to burgeoning population. According to a survey in 2017, there are 195 million people who are starving in India. Nearly 47 million or 4 out of 10 children in India are undernourished and have stunted growth. As the Minister of Consumer Affairs and Public Distribution stated that, the National Food Security Act, also known as the NFSA, was one such scheme introduced in 2013, which aimed to provide subsidized food grains to approximately two-thirds of India's 1.2 billion population. The government is also providing employment through schemes like Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Act and National Rural Livelihood Mission to improve financial status of the underprivileged. To combat under and malnourishment, schemes such as midday meal at school for children and Anganwadi system have been introduced to provide ration to pregnant and lactating mothers. UN priority groups partners with government to improve NFSA and work towards increasing farm income for small and marginal farmers. Government is encouraging people to establish food processing units so that nutritious food can be supplied to people throughout the year. We have sufficient food to feed people. However, PDA should provide food at affordable prices. Employment guarantee to youth and increasing farm income are some of the challenges the country is facing and the government, with support from UN agencies, will continue to work to address these challenges. Thank you. The right time to eat. The right time to eat is for a rich man when he's hungry, for a poor man when he has something to eat, which is the present scenario in this world. And we are here to change it. Greetings, my fellow cabinet members and our ally members. Thank you, Ria, for providing the picture of the agenda. Straight away, starting with the schemes and its financial statuses. <coughs> schemes, which are the National Food Security Mission, uh, Rashtriya Krishna Vikas Yojana, third integrated scheme on oils, oil seeds, pulses, palm oil, and mazes, fourth Pradhan Mantri Bhima Yojana, and the fifth one, the ENAM, which is the E National Agricultural Market. Subsidies on food, fertilizer and petroleum have been pledged higher by 3% to more than 2.4 lakh crore INR for the, for the fiscal year 2017-18. The subsidy bill on food, petroleum and fertilizer is estimated at 2,40,338.6 crore INR for the present fiscal. The subsidy bill is seen at 2,32,704.68 crore for the year 16-17 as per the revised budget estimates. The government, has, the government of India has embarked Rs. 1,45,338.60 CR for food subsidy in, in the present fiscal against 1.35 lakh crore in the 
previous fiscal year. Food subsidy bill is expected to be higher next fiscal as the National Food Security Act, under which the government provides highly subsidized food grains to over 80 crore people, has been rolled out across the country from November 2016. Fertilizer subsidy has been kept unchanged at rupees 70,000 crore for the present fiscal, as the domestic industry was demanding higher allocation to this subsidy. In fertilizer subsidy, the government has allocated 49,000 crores for urea and 20,000 crores for decontrolled phosphoric and potassium fertilizers. Petroleum subsidy has been reduced to 25,000 crore INR uh, from 31,000 crore in this present fiscal and will be further reduced to 16,000 crores as embarked for the LPG policy and the rest is for the kerosene. And this is to ensure the increase in usage of the electronic transportation. To end with the fact that agriculture accounts for 54.6 of our workforce, but only which contributes 15% of our GDP. With such a costly exchequer, we are ready to face the world and prove that we are not going to compromise achieving the SDGs and lead it in our own way and state. Thank you. Leading speaker, I'm Adhilika Rao, the Minister of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. The prevalence of nutrition encompassing both undernutrition and overnutrition is an important indicator of a country's health. Those who are either undernourished or obese underperform in various aspects of life, missing out on opportunities to become productive members of the society. India is among those countries in the world with the highest numbers of undernourished. As a country aspires to fulfill its economic and social development goals, malnutrition is one area which requires great attention. India has come a long way since 1945 when it became one of the founding members of FAO as low-income food deficient country. Today, the country is not only self-sufficient in rice and wheat, it also produces over 260 million tons of food waste, 269 million tons of agriculture produce, and 132 mi million tons of milk. Agriculture is a mainstay of the country's economy, contributing to 18% of India's GDP and providing a source of employment for more than 47% of the world's population. Environment and climate change are the major issues affecting the agriculture produce and food. This is because the change in the natural state of environment of the soil can result in the decline of the production of crops. Most of the crops of India are rain fed. This indicates that if the monsoon is late, the crops are spoiled. For this, India has issued a few schemes. Participatory Climate Monitoring PCM, stations were established in 25 villages across the project area. Seven climate parameters, including wind direction and velocity, rainfall and sunshine hours, were regularly recorded and registered by a group of nearly 3,000 volunteers. Result, results recorded in the volunteers' book, record books were then disseminated at the habitation level using display books. Climate Change Adaption Committee, CCACs, were formed as a coordination and consultative mechanism managing the climate monitoring system at the habitation and hydrological unit levels and ensuring dissemination of the information and knowledge gained. Thank you. Greetings to all. I'm Samya Mandakar, Minister of Urban Poverty Elevation. Food security in any nation can only be accomplished when food is available and affordable to everyone in sufficient quantity. Presently in India, around 22% of the population is under poverty line. The world has around 872.3 million people below the poverty line, of which 176 million live in India. Through urban development, we can make sure that poverty waves goodbye to our nation and everyone is able to afford food. The Ministry of Urban Development and Poverty Elevation has performed many acts and has passed many rules in order to achieve the same. In April 1999, our government launched the Jawahar Gram Samriti Yojana. Under this act, rural areas saw a substantial amount of development, making them more accessible. The main focus of this act was to benefit farmers so that they could easily sell their products in the urban market. India firmly believes that unemployment is one of the fundamental causes of poverty. To combat this cause and make food more accessible to our population, we passed the National Employment Guarantee Act in 2005. Under this act, the ministries of urban and rural development worked together to make available 100 to 150 days of work to many unemployed people. This propelled India's per capita economy and provided employment to 4.78 crore households. The Integrated Rural Development Program was another joint venture made by the Urban and Rural Poverty Elevation Departments. This was our flagship program during the early 1980s, which was extended after seeing overwhelming success. IRDP in India is among the world's most ambitious programs to elevate rural poverty by providing income generated assets to the poorest of the poor. We distributed assets worth Rs. 47.6 billion among 60 million families. This helped us in bringing a large amount of India's population above the poverty line. People who had seen starvation throughout their lives were now easily able to have three square meals a day. 
Despite taking all these measures, we still have a lot to accomplish. Not only in India, but around the world. There are hundreds of people who are living in poverty and starving. If the international community works together, we can ensure that food is secure and everyone has access to it. India has been working hard to reduce poverty and give its people a better lifestyle. And we appreciate international co cooperation in making this world and the life of its people better. Thank you. Thank you. Greetings to all. I am Shashank, the Minister of Science and Technology. Goal 2 of the UN Sustainable Development Goals aims to eradicate hunger from the face of the earth and ensure food security to every human. And India has been taking part actively towards this goal. And part of one of the targets to achieve this goal is investing more in research and improving methods of agriculture and storage using advanced science and technology. Genetically modified foods or GM foods, also known as genetically engineered foods or bioengineered foods, are foods produced from organisms that have had changes introduced into their DNA using the methods of genetic engineering. Genetic engineering techniques allow for the introduction of new traits as well as greater control over traits than previous methods such as selective breeding and mutation breeding. Since the Green Revolution started in the 1960s, India has been trying out different methods of crop improvement and yield improvement. The introduction of high yielding variety of seeds and the increased quality of fertilizers and irrigation techniques led to the increase in production to make the country self-sufficient in food grains, thus improving agriculture in India. Yield per unit of farmland improved by more than 30% between 1947 and 1979. The immediate problems which were addressed by the Green Revolution are frequent famines, lack of finance, and lack of self-sufficiency. Self Storage is another integral part of eradicating hunger from the face of the earth. According to an FAO report, around 25% of India's current crops are lost to pests. Lots of losses in food grains can lead to lesser amounts of food reaching the common people and also means hunger. That is why India's, India has many silos and granaries to store food at the required conditions. Coal refrigeration is also done in many parts of India. All the storage units in India have a total capacity of 814.84 metric tons. India is conserving over 64,829 traditional varieties in over 20 gene banks located in different states in connection with the target 2.5 of the UN SDGs. Research about new genetic engineering methods like CRISPR-Cas9, which can degrade exogenous substrates, is also being done in order to ensure food security. The food and agriculture sector offers key solutions for development and is central for hunger and poverty er eradication. Every person on the earth has the right to enjoy nutritious food and if more investment and importance is given to all, se all sectors related to food security, surely the 195 million people who are hungry every day can lead a normal and pleasant life. Greetings to all. I'm Kirti, the Minister of Water Resources and Ganga Rejuvenation. I strongly surmise that water plays a crucial role in assuring food security in our, in our nation. Our vision is optimal sustainable development, maintenance of quality and efficient use of water resources to match with the growing demands of our country. Irrigation is a crucial part of agriculture. I feel that if the availability of water is made sure in every part of our nation, practicing agriculture would become easier, more economical and more productive. India's irrigation system has seen substantial amount of improvement in recent years. Many regions in the country have been irrigated and maintained. Previously, our farmers relied on rainfall for irrigation. Our government has changed this now. Today, most farmers in India use modern methods of irrigation efficient systems. These systems use less water but provide the same level of water to the crops. We are also educating our farmers about sustainable development so that less water is consumed and we get the same quality of product. If the water resources in a nation are developed and are made available to the farmers, they may have combat to poverty and food insecurity as well. Many farmers around the world face this problem. They do not have water to grow crops. This leads to a bad harvest and less income for the farmer and makes him more vulnerable to food insecurity. India has been working to help these farmers and make their lives a little better. We have launched the participatory irrigation management concept. Under this concept, our Irrigation Ministry and Water Resource Development Ministry drafted many schemes such as National Hydrology Project Phase 1, Phase 2 and Phase 3. Pancheshwaram Multipurpose multi Project, Kolabaram Project, Dam Rehabilitation and Improvement Project, Irrigation Management Project, Accelerated Irrigation Benefit Program, Command Area Development and Water Management Program, Flood Management Wing Program, Repair, Renovation and Restoration of Water Bodies, National Groundwater Management Improvement Program and Water Quality Assessments to help increase and improve irrigation projects in India. 
Many farmers are being helped under this project to subsidize loans and modern irrigation projects. The Indian government has launched its flagship program to counter water pollution, the Ganga Action Plan. The Ganga Action Plan Phase 1, which was introduced on the basis of experimentation, wasn't successful enough as it couldn't cover all the areas. The Ganga Action Plan Phase 2 was reintroduced in recent years. A total of 215 schemes have been sanctioned and 69 schemes have been completed under the National Reser River Conservation Plan. Efforts are still being made to clean the Indian River, the Ganges and its tributaries. And as 3.46% of India's population are un is un unemployed and 22% are under the poverty line, the Ganga Action Plan Phase 2 has led to creation of many jobs which has helped the unemployed to come out of poverty. I believe that these initiatives club with other measures will help make our waters better. The farmers will benefit and thousands of other families will not be food insecure anymore. This is our vision and we will welcome global partnership and achievement. Thank you. Greeting my fellow cabinets, I, Chavi Agarwal, Minister of Women and Ch uh, Child Welfare of India. Women and children in any nation play a huge role in developing the nation. India has launched uh, countless schemes and programs to combat these consequences. One of our flagless mission to ensure food security was a food security mission, comprising rice, wheat and pulses to increase the production of rice by 10 million tons, wheat by 8 million tons and pulses by 2 million tons by the end of 2012. We achieved these goals and further increased the plans. We have, inc we have succeeded in these plans. The government has also launched integrated schemes on oil seeds, pulses, palm oil and maize, which brought great increase in the production of these products, which have provided employment for women. These products were then sold to this, uh, sold at sub subsidized rates. We have also launched schemes to help children. The most successful scheme we have launched was a mi midday meal. Under this scheme, we provided free midday meals to ru rural schools. By this, we saw a huge increase in the number of school-going children. We have achieved two things by this. First, children became nourished and fo food secured. Second, we have able to educate many pe uh, children. India also subsidized grain for, school, uh, for people living below the poverty line. This ambition was reinforced by the nation food, by the nation food security of tw uh, 2013. The act provided of the act provides of courage up to 75 percent of rural population and up to 50 percent of urban population for re receiving subsidized food grains, thus, cover thus covering about two thirds of the population. Though we have implemented all of these previously mentioned schemes and acts, we face new and big challenges. Slow, uh, slowing agriculture growth, climate change, land degradation, and skinning biodiversity, and also causing implementation of these acts to slow down. Though facing challenges, India is trying, the, trying its best to ensure food security to its citizens. We, and we promote global partnership to achieve the same around the world. India hopes that the world has a bright future towards the food security. Thank you. Greetings to everyone. I am Nishal, the Minister of Social Justice. If the malnourished in India formed a country, it would be the world's fifth largest, almost the size of Indonesia. According to Food and Agriculture Organization, 237.7 million Indians are currently undernourished. And it is far worse if we use the minimal calorie intake norms accepted officially in India. By those count, the number of Indians who cannot afford the daily minimum could equal the entire population of Europe. Yet, the Indian elite shrieks at the prospect of formalizing a universal right to food. Notwithstanding the collective moral deficit this reveals, it also shows that the millions of Indians whose food rights are so flagrantly violated are completely voiceless in this policy space. India's problem is not only to secure food, but to secure food justice. What can food justice practically mean? First, to prevent situations where grains rot, where people die, a very basic principle of distributive justice. But it has to mean a lot more. People must have the right to produce food with dignity, have control over the parameters of production, get just value for the labor and the produce. Mainstream notions of food ignore this dimension. Food justice must entail both production and distribution. Its fundamental premise must be that governments have a non-negotiable obligation to address food insecurity. 
they must also address the structural factors that engender this insecurity. Most governments, however, appear ne neither willing nor able to deliver food justice. It needs, therefore, the devolution of power and resources to the local level where millions of protagonists with the knowledge of local needs and situations can create a just food economy. The anti-poverty approach to food security rejects the destruction of the welfare state and the neoconservative values of individualism, competition and inequality and proposes to restore, restore the values such as equality, fellowship, democracy to the foundation of social policy. The anti-poverty approach is concerned with income security rather than food and food security. Community development within this approach focuses on raising awareness of property, advocacy with and for poor people and community economic development. In the words of one anti-poverty activist, we challenge people who aren't poor to listen to people who are poor, to work with us to change the system to end poverty, to, to demand that the politicians work for a just society where people are more equal and where the poor don't have to depend on the leftovers from the rich to subsist. Thank you. Greetings, Honorable Speaker. I am Amisha Mahanti, the incumbent Union Minister of Human Resource Development. Food, the way it is grown, produced, traded, transported, processed, stored and marketed, is the fundamental connection between people and the planet and the class to inclusive and economic growth. Food security is a challenge in India because of the large number of low-income consumers and is influenced by several factors, including those that determine food availability, domestic food production, and the capacity to import food, as well as determinants of food access, including the distribution of food among various segments of population. One reason why food is not distributed equitably is that a significant amount is wasted, and this certainly has to terminate. A focus on rural development and investment in agriculture, crops, livestock, forestry, fisheries, and aquaculture are powerful tools to end hunger as well as bring about sustainable development. India, with a population of over 1.3 billion, has seen tremendous growth in the past two decades. The Food Corporation of India and Central Warehousing Corporation are two integral agencies that are driven by the vision of ensuring food security. The government of India has adopted a paramount policy framework to facilitate the use of irrigation and newer farming techniques. The measures focus mainly on rational distribution of cultivable land, improving the size of the farmers, and providing security to the tenant cultivators apart from providing the farmers with improved technology. India has provided wheat and rice at highly subsidized and favorable prices through its public distribution system for food grains. This involves the distribution of products that have been procured by the Department of Food and Public Distribution at a minimum support price. About 10 million people belonging to the severe poverty group were also beneficiaries of the subsidy through the Anta Yodhya Anna Yojana. Another area which was explored is crop diversity. Higher profitability and the stability in production highlight its importance. The government of India has prioritized strengthening agriculture through measures in irrigation, crop insurance, and improved varieties. The government has also taken critical steps to enhance food security through a national nutrition mission system and national food security act. The National Mission on Sustainable Agriculture and many such national schemes on horticulture, agriculture, and technology in livestock are leading the way in improving India's agriculture. Working to improve food and agriculture can have a substantial impact on the attainment of the other 16 SDGs as it can help combat climate change, bolster economic growth and contribute to peace and stability in societies around the world. We can be the zero hunger generation. Our world has a lot of wealth and so no one deserves to sleep hungry. Thank you. My hearty greetings to everyone present here. I, Shristi, the Health Minister, believe that Food security plays a huge role in ensuring healthy and fruitful nations. Our goal is to create a disease-free nation and to accomplish this. We need to make everybody in the nation food secure. Rural areas in India are in dire need of help. Food is not available and malnutrition thrives on rural population. The food insecure faces many challenges, such as reduced efficiency, reduced immunity, and they also lack in performance when compared to the food secure. More than 195 million people are undernourished and millions more on the verge of going undernourished. Women account for 30% of the undernourished in India. We believe that the best way to mitigate the growing numbers is to empower people and make the population self-sustainable. Our aim by em empowering the deprived population is to make them food secure. 
making them independent will at least make sure that the family eats two square meals a day. Innocent children who have only seen starvation and disease in their lives should be able to nourish and educate themselves as they are the future of this nation. India is working towards this goal and has already taken many measures to mitigate the situation. The Indian government has launched many schemes to make it possible, make the population healthy and food, sec food secure. These schemes have provided the nation with overwhelming success and hope that we can make the situation better. We have launched the National Food Security Mission and under this mission, we are able to make a large portion of food insecure, food secure. We also launched the integrated schemes on oil seeds, pulses, palm oil and, and maize under which we subsidize food grains. Through this act, we are able to make food affordable for the rural population. The Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bhima Yojana also saw great success. Under this movement, crops were cultivated by giving jobs to the unemployed and were sold at highly subsidized rates. Thank you. Hunger is not an issue of charity. It is an issue of justice. Greetings, everyone. I'm Khyati, the representative of India in the UN. Rapid economic growth and increased agricultural productivity over the past two decades have seen the number of undernourished people drop by almost half. In recent years, our efforts in the country have gone beyond the realm of food production, concentrating on providing technical assistance for incorporating best practices to generate agricultural outlooks, facilitating adoption and promotion of improved livestock management practices, and building knowledge and capacities for communities. Further cause of implementing and scaling up agricultural intensification techniques, urban agriculture, agroforestry, etc. have also not been included. Continuous shrinking and developing demand may increase the cost of food security. The challenges of zero hunger means zero stunted children, less than two years, 100% access to adequate food all years, all food systems are sustainable, 100% increase in smallholder productivity and income, zero loss or zero waste of food. So the government of India have evolved several safety nets to address the challenges like the public distribution system, the Antodoya Anna Yojana, the Rosgar Yojana, the Midday Meal Scheme, the Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Act, and most recently the Landmark Security Act, which aims to provide subsidized food gains up to 75% of rural population and 50% of the urban households. The UN in India, especially through its specialized agency, supports the government of India in implementing its national missions and programs aimed at strengthening food security and nation. Thank you. Greetings to all. I'm Aprazita, Minister of Rural Development. In our country, food Charity is not a new phenomenon. People have been suffering from the hunger and malnutrition since long. Public as well as private interventions have been always made to reduce the food insecurity and hunger. Thanks to Green Revolution, that hunger and famine, a worse kind of food insecurity in India, has now reduced to a large extent. However, still after the stock of food grains, at national level, food insecurity and hunger is prevalent in rural areas. 68% 68% of India is currently facing undernourishment and malnutrition. And this is an, in spite of the fact that it has made substantial progress in health determinants over the past few decades and ranked second worldwide in farm output. The state of India's food security is worsening by the year. The cost of food items is increasing rapidly, making them unaffordable to a majority of people. Added to these wars is the short supply of pulses and edible oils, which forces the central government to import them. One of our main implications is the National Rural Employment Guarantee Act, which ensures employment and as well as food. Thank you. Greetings to the respected uh, cabinet members. I'm the Prime Minister of India, and I'll be giving a brief overview of what the Indian government has done and achieved till date to fight global hunger. According to recent statistics, India currently has the largest number of undernourished people in the world, and, is, and this is still the case in spite of various steps already being taken by India, of which investment in agriculture being one of them. This has allowed India to be ranked second worldwide in farm output and one of the largest exporters of food. But even though various steps have been implemented, it does not really serve to every poor individual in the country. Not a crisis of 
less resources, but more of an issue of lack of humanity and morality within all of us. Because of this, India has embarked upon effective introduction of education where there is none and emphasized upon awareness for the educated. India as an economy has had substantial progress in the health economy and has taken numerous steps, including various food programs to reduce hunger to the utmost minimum and passed many laws like the National Food Security Act in 2013. The GHI score, which is given to India, which is a multidimensional statistic tool used to describe the state of countries in a hunger situation, ranks India 97 out of 118 countries. The recent global studies say, uh, global study says that 42% of children in India are underweight and 52% of children are stunted by two years of age. And so India has aimed and has taken into action to reduce this by almost 52%. Moreover, hunger and malnutrition in a broad perspective has a distinct gender dimension and are widespread among women and mothers. Anemia affects 75% of children below five years, 51% of 15 to 59 years, 87% pregnant women. More than 70% of women and kids have serious nutritional deficiencies and so has come up with bioproduction of food to increase the nutritional value of food. For example, through rice fortification, which allows consumers to gain more nutrients from the consumption of rice. So India's government has taken importance in a lot of areas and so has emphasized upon investment in agriculture, rural development, social protection, improve those who are undergoing neighborhood deprivation and equality of opportunity. Equality of opportunity is clearly very important because social hierarchy, which plays a major role in the hunger that exists in India, is clearly evident that there is, uh, that due to the presence of scheduled castes, scheduled tribes and the minorities of India. Therefore, it is established that poverty, gender inequality, and low level of awareness are, however, the major reasons of hunger and malnutrition. The government has been responding with a number of measures to overcome hunger and malnutrition, malnutrition. And this has been aptly reflected by the speech given by the President of India, given during the spe acceptance speech to which I quote, our national mission must continue to be what it was, to eliminate the, uh, to eliminate the curse of poverty. There is no humiliation more abusive than hunger. We must lift those at the bottom so that poverty is erased from the dictionary of modern India. Lately, as per all-inclusive National Food Security Bill 2011, the government proposed and has taken into action to assist 67% of the total rural and urban households comprising of the poor, children, pregnant, lactating mothers, aged widows, destitute, disabled, and the vulnerable with food and nutritional subsidy and financial support. The two key factors in addressing food security and social and economic issues arising from widespread hunger and malnutrition are child mortality and undernutrition. And so, improvement in agriculture, genetically modified food, including rice fortification to improve and increase the nutrition from the food grains provided, increase the use of effective irrigation systems, and improve the crisis of low crop productivity, which in turn reduces a household income, which in turn reduces households' income, limiting their buying power of food commodities they do not grow themselves. Road improvements are critical to improving food access in the region as well. Reliable roads not only open up economic opportunities, but also serve to connect a rural population to health and educational resources. This connectivity, particularly to educational opportunities, can help diversify rural economies away from a sole reliance on agriculture, of which 45% of the employment that is in India is supported by agriculture. To conclude, Yes, there are a lot of people who are still experiencing hunger and poverty in India, but it is without doubt, like we said, numerous steps have been taken in order to fight against it. The disadvantage being that India has a relatively huge population, and so India has been tackling this by its food production and GDP rate doubling over the past years to rise faster than the growth of population. Thank you. Greetings to all. I am Shivani, Minister of External Affairs. What must be clearly acknowledge is that no country or region has the cap cap capacity to eradicate global poverty on its own. From a practical standpoint, the magnitude of transformation requires, required is simply far too great. But a moral reality comes into play as well, that the advancement of all humanity, hum humanity requires the efforts of all humanity. Just as every member of the human family has the right to benefit from a materially, socially, and spiritually prosperous civilization, every member has the capacity to contribute towards its 
construction. Therefore, we need to work together. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. That was it. Oh, thank you. Uh, we're going to, uh, I think Taiwan has a question. Taiwan, did you have a question, please? Yes, we have a question. Okay, go ahead, please. Hello, I'm Julie. We've seen a movie, English English. So we'd like to know if the zoo is really common dessert in India. Pardon? Can you please repeat the question, please? Could you repeat it again, please? We've seen a movie, English English. So we'd like to know What would you like to know? Lazu is really common dessert in India. I think they had a, asking ask, about. Go ahead, Mary. Yeah, you're asking about a dessert that was mentioned in the movie. If they know what movie they are, she's talking about. Um, I'm not aware. Of the... Yeah, they, they're not aware. Uh, Really quickly, uh, let's try to ask a question about the food security issue a second. Uh, okay. Sometime this year, isn't India going to be larger than China in population? I don't know. Um, even though the population is rising, uh, um, we have the fact uh, the fact being that uh, India has uh, improved its food production and GDP doubling at the rate at which the growth was, uh, the growth of population has been rising so the growth of population yes it is a fact this is a factor that is in hand and is an issue right now but then india has been tackling it pretty well okay so would you say it was more a distribution or a production problem uh, the production has been increasing and like, we can see that according to stats india is the largest exporter of food and has doubled its um, Oh, it's farm output over the years. So it's not a problem of production and uh, this thing. It's the product. It's a problem of reallocation of resources to the right, uh, to the right sector of the society. Okay, so, so something like this, how does this help you understand more about food security problem? To me, uh, personally, food security, uh, the, the problem of food security in India is the fact that it's the, it's solely based on the social hierarchy that is present in India right now. There are, there are a lot of minorities, the scheduled caste, the scheduled tribes, the minorities in general that are, that are facing the food security issue as of now. So India has been uh, promoting and emphasizing on equality of opportunity for everybody. And this is one way of tackling uh, the food security crisis in India. Right? Okay. Very good. That was an excellent job. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, we're going to... And Michael, we have a quick question from Taiwan. Okay, go ahead. Then I have to go to Turkey real quick. They got a real too short presentation and we'll go back to Taiwan. Please. Uh, Michael, can we go next? Because we have younger kids who need to leave. I know. Early. They got they, they have to leave in 10 minutes too. So if they can, if we can split somehow. Let's just go. Hurry. I'm sorry. We have a food scandal of gutter oil in Taiwan. Do you have the same problem in your country? Pardon? Please. Um, we, we have a food scandal of gutter, of gutter oil in Taiwan. Do you have the same problem in your country? <laughs> Problems about food, adding uh, things that, that are not supposed to be in the food, like uh, tainted yeah. oil and things like that. Uh, yes, no. Uh, the fact that India has been compromising the food consumption, I mean, they have uh, moved on to um, more genetically processed food instead of, you know, cultural food. Yes, they do have cultural food, but then we have uh, focused more on to genetically modified food for the nutritional values that they give us. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, if we could do this, Mary, could we let them do their PowerPoint and then we can do their, uh, then go to you? Kids are getting a squirt, squirt machine yeah, here. I know, I <laughs> Just about five, six more minutes, please. Uh, okay. Go ahead, uh, in, uh, Turkey, go ahead and present your PowerPoint, please. Oh, Michael, how are you? 
Uh, can you hear us? Yes. I can't see you yet, but I can sure hear you. Uh, can't you see us? No. Can you show it? Uh, no, <laughs> we don't know what. what uh, you, you can't see me, but you will see the class, classroom, right? I, I can see you now on the multi screen, but I still can't figure out what's going on. So let's try to. There we go. Go ahead. Before we start, we want to say that we are so very sorry for your loss. Oh, thank you very much. For today, uh, we have one PowerPoint presentation and one video for main dishes and one for, uh, short, very short PowerPoint presentation for food security. Okay, hurry. Okay, we will be quick. We will start with the presentation of main dishes. Okay, good. Traditional Turkish dishes. This slideshow contents are. Okay, we, we can't. We can't say anything yet. If worst came to worst, I have it here. Direkt masa üstünü paylaş. Evet. Hmm. Desktop. Sen var mı? Okay, now can you see it on my screen? Yes, we see it now. They can okay. begin. Let's just go ahead and do this because we're getting okay, okay. messed up. Okay, you just got. Okay, go ahead. Uh, traditional Turkish dishes, yes. mantı, meat, pasty, uh, these are the ingredients. Recipe of mantı, firstly combine the flour and salt in a mixing bowl, add the eggs and water mixing well with your hands, add more water if needed to form a soft dough, cover and set aside for at least 30 minutes. Then shred the onion. Uh, iskener kebab. These are the ingredients. Recipe of is Iskender kebab. Firstly, preheat oven to uh, 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Arrange pita bread on a baking sheet and lightly toast in the oven. Cut, cut pita bread into bite-sized pieces and keep warm. After that, heat the olive oil in a skillet over medium heat, searing the uh, chicken, onion, and garlic, and cook until chicken juices run clear. Mix in tomato puree, season with cumin, uh, salt, and pepper. Continue cooking 10 minutes. Lastly, arrange pita pieces in a serving dish, drizzle with butter, and top with the chicken mixture. Garnish with yard and parsley to serve. Lahmacun. Uh, these are the ingredients. Uh, okay. Am I way ahead? Of, am I ahead of you here? Sorry. Okay, I, I didn't know if I was keeping up with you. No, I'm sorry. Uh, firstly. Heat a large uh, skillet over medium-high heat. Combine the garlic, onion, basil, parsley, mint, paprika, cumin, coriander, diced bell peppers, lemon juice, and olive oil in a food processor. Toast the vegetables until finely chopped. Add the whole tomatoes and process until the mixture is a thick curry. Place the lamp in the preheated skillet and reduce the heat medium. Add the puree and the tomato paste and mix well. Cook and stir until the lamp is cooked through. 10 to uh, 15 minutes, stirring the cayenne pepper. 
pepper and salt to taste. Transfer the mixture to a shallow baking dish to cool to room temperature. Cover with a plastic wrap and refri refrigerate overnight. Then dissolve the yeast and sugar in a one cup warm water. Combine the flour and salt in a mixing bowl and stir well. Add the vegetable oil and half cup of water to yeast mixture and pour it over the flour. Use your hands to mix the dough. Turn the dough out onto a lightly floured surface and knead until smooth and elastic about eight minutes. Shape the dough into a bowl and transfer to an oil bowl. Cover with a wet towel and let rise in a warm place until double in bulk, about one hour. Remove the lamp sauce from the refrigerator and allow it to come up to room temperature. Prepare to, uh, the garlic sauce, combine the yolk, parsley, crushed garlic, and salt and pepper to taste. Stir well and set aside. Punch the dough down, transfer it to a floor wall surface, and cut the dough into 10 portions. Shape each portion into a round. Flatten each round with your hand. Use a rolling pin to roll each piece into a 10-inch circle. The dough should be thin like a crepe. Place the rounds on parchment paper. After that, preheat an oven to 500 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Stir the lamp sauce and then spoon it onto a dough round. Spread it thinly to the edges and press down lightly so it sticks to the dough. Bake pizzas on parchment paper, line baking sheets on the lowest oven rack until the edges are light in tan color, eight to 10 minutes. Lastly, place on a wire rack to cool. The pizzas can be stored in an airtight container in the refrigerator for three days or in a freezer for three months. To reheat, place uh, the pizza in a uh, 350 degree Fahrenheit oven for eight minutes. To so assemble the lahmacun, drizzle with garlic sauce, top with shredded cabbage, and roll up to eat. Bon appetit. Um, okay. Yes, go ahead. On, uh, so we'll skip the video and uh, uh, keep on with the uh, food security presentation. Okay. Nutrition, nutrition issues in Turkey. Consequences of nutrition, nutrition issues among all to five-year-old kids, anemia, protein energy malnutrition, rickets, tooth decay. Consequences of nutrition issues among teenagers, tinnosaur obesity, vitamin deficiency, anemia, basic water, tooth decay. Can I ask a question? How, how bad is obesity or tooth decay in your country? How much I don't think it's that bad, but... Here in the States, tooth decay is not as bad, but obesity really is. But go ahead. Consequences of nutri nutrition issues among adult women, obesity, anemia, basic water, vitamin deficiency. Consequences of nutrition issues among adult men, thinness, obesity. Consequences of nutrition issues among pregnant women, anemia, basic water, vitamin deficiency, osteomyelitis. Ostomelisia. Consequences of nutrition issues among old people, thinness, vitamin deficiency, mineral deficiency, osteoporosis, cardiovascular diseases, hypertension, diabetes, cancer. Reasons of nutrition issues, processing, distribution and marketing factors, income rate factors, general education and habits factor, environmental problems, demographic factors, lack of legislation about nutrition, agriculture and food production factors. Agriculture and food production factors, transformation of use fields into industry, unconscious fertilizer use, inadequacy of irrigation facilities, shift of agricultural, production to commercial industry plants.
Overall, animal food production is insufficient. Production of grain, fruit, vegetables, oil, legumes is sufficient. Milk production is sufficient. Annual production quantities of various fruits. Nutri nutrient consumption in Turkey. Bread and other green products provide the 50% of energy. Bread, milk, yogurt, meat, fruit, vegetable consumption decreases. Dry bean, sugar, oil, egg consumption increases. Rate of carbon dioxide, protein, fat. Obesity in Turkey. Go ahead. All değil mi? Share screen for me. Uh, that's all, Michael. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, we're going to go to uh, see some presentations from several schools in Taiwan <laughs> who have been patiently waiting. <laughs> Okay, so first we have uh, students from Taichung Elementary School, and they will be presenting live cooking lessons right here with everybody. And the first dish is fried rice. Go ahead. Hello, everyone. Today we're going to make a fried rice. We will need four teaspoons soy sauce, two tablespoons vegetable oil, one teaspoon salt, three green onions, three hundred gram rice, one egg, one fourth onion. First. He walk over medium heat, pour in oil, then stir in cook rest about one minute. So they are uh, stirring the rice in the pan right now, since you're not hearing anything from them. I thought I'd give a little hey, uh, introduction Mary, by the side. Hi, yeah? Do yeah, you have a doctor ready there too? Uh, hopefully we <laughs> won't get to that. I was just joking. Oh, careful. <laughs> now it's getting everywhere. Now the food's getting everywhere. Okay, and now what are you doing? 
Then chop on fourth onion and three spring onions. And they're adding the onions and spring onions into the rice. Add them to the rice and mix, stir fry the rice mixture until tender. So how long does it take to uh, stir fry the contents until it is done? Do you know? Uh, about one or two minutes. Uh, I think one or two minutes has already passed. <laughs> two or three hours. <laughs> So how many, two, one or two minutes? <laughs> and now what are you doing? Cracking an egg. Yeah, cracking an egg into the uh, stirred content. And stir quickly. Stir quickly, okay. Now, Mary, do you suggest brown eggs or? What kind of eggs do you need? Or is it any kind of eggs? Just eggs. Just eggs, okay. <laughs> the boys said just eggs. Anna, what grade are you in? Six. There's six graders. Did you oh, hear wow. that, Michael? Yeah, yeah. that's good. I tell you, they can make their own food. That's good. And their parents are here as well. <laughs> oh, my God. They should the be so proud. So proud. Yeah, mothers are so proud. Mama hugs me. Yeah. And they have been practicing for many weeks, as I've heard. Now, Mary, when they get up to your grade, they'll be able to make you a gourmet, you and Brian, a gourmet dinner. Oh, hopefully. <laughs> and what are you adding now? Soy sauce. Soy sauce. I think you can get those in the States as well, and maybe in Brazil oh, yeah. or oh, yeah. India and Turkey. Now, is there a certain soy sauce that you suggest? Is there a certain kind of soy sauce or any kind? Soy sauce. It's just soy sauce. <laughs> I, I mean, because I'm not a gourmet expert on soy sauce, so I didn't know. And so what did you just add? Salt. Salt, OK. So soy sauce and salt, OK? Right. Are you sure you're not burning it? No. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Oh my gosh. Just stir and fry those and until it's heated a little light. Now, now, Mary, you guys are going to eat it hot for us too, right? Uh, uh, we, we probably can't get someone to do that. The people in Brazil. Yeah, Brian went to turn down the heat because we were. Brian went over to turn down the heat because we were afraid that they were going to burn the whole pan. <laughs> ah, okay. Now, do oh, you, it smells really good here. Now, what type of pans do you guys use? What type of pan is that, anybody? Teflon? Yeah, okay. Teflon, do you have those? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I, I was just wondering because it doesn't look like it's a non-stick pan, that's what I was thinking. Right. It is a non-stick pan. I didn't know if they, uh, we could ask uh, some of the people here in a second from the other cultures if they make their fried rice like that. Is it done? Is it done? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Can you uh, 
bring that to the front so that everyone can see it. Are you able to do that? Oh, yes, you can. Come on. Careful. <laughs> Higher. <laughs> ah, yeah. Good picture. All right. So uh, they are also taking pictures in other sites of the Black USA and India yeah. and Turkey. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll in India, I want to try to sample some of that since they're the closest country. <laughs> Thank you. Would you like anything else you want to tell us about this dish? No. No? <laughs> okay, can, can we have them ask, can any of the people ask them some questions? Anybody would like to ask questions? Are these a nice young man who just made fried rice? Yeah. Did anybody have any questions from India or Brazil? Unmute yourself when... Uh, Brazil? Is that Brazil? Yes, go ahead. Okay. Anybody have a question? A moment. Okay. If not, continue, please. Go ahead. Yeah, get the microphones too close. We have a, a problem. One moment. Yeah, yeah. The, the mics are too close together. Okay, let's try. Okay, let's try. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Fine. Go ahead and ask the question. Very right, nice. Ask, you had a so, question here too. What what kind of side dishes do you eat with this uh, kind of sticky rice with eggs and onions and spring onions? Yeah, what what side dishes, Mary? It's the main dish, is the main dish, right? Okay, and you will pay some food. Yeah, okay, so actually uh, you don't need side dish, you can just eat this as a main dish because it's already mixed with a variety of ingredients. And uh, the, the boiler said, but you can have it with drinks. So usually they have it with soup or a soup or some drinks. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yeah, so you're saying the soup would be your side then for it, right? Yeah, Okay. right. And what type of soup would you normally serve with something like that? What type of soup do you recommend? <laughs> the mothers at the back are saying uh, a kind of meatball soup, a Taiwanese meatball soup. Okay. Goes well with it. Do you know that kind, Michael? I have actually seen some like that. They have some in Turkey too, and I, I've seen that, oh. so I didn't know. Okay, so that's very good. Now, how often, Thank you. Do, how often do you cook yeah. with mothers like that? How often do we what? How often do you cook for your mothers like that? How often do you cook for your mother? <laughs> once a month. Once a month? Is that oh, right. Okay, once a month. That is so nice. And can we see the mothers too? Can we see the mothers? Yeah, we want to see the proud mothers. So mothers, please raise your hand. All right. <laughs> Okay, so you see the mothers over there? Oh, that's really nice. I'm glad you guys waited. That was really well worth it, too. Yeah, I got a picture of them waving, so that'd be good. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any more questions for our young men? Yeah, uh, India, could you add, do you have a question on rice? How, how big is rice in India, where you're at? 
But I gotta try to get you off mute here a second. We have another team of girls, elementary okay. school girls, sixth grade girls. They're also gonna present. Pre uh, they're gonna present on another dish. Mm -hmm. Toast pudding, pudding toast. Do okay. you like to ask a question? Yeah, go ahead, India. So, how often do you make that dish? How often do you eat fried rice? Do you have? Do you make a vegetarian person? Once every two weeks, maybe. So we should. Okay, that's really good. Once every two weeks. Okay, and they have one more quick question. Go ahead, India. Do you make it? We didn't get the uh, question. Could you repeat it one more time, please? Do you make a dish without meat? Do you make a dish without meat? Do you make the dish without meat, with or without meat? Uh, you can make it with or without. Depends on your choice. Your English is good. Wow. And if I if I got that right, Mary. They would actually add meat with a soup, wouldn't they? If they decide not to put meat in the rice? Yeah, it depends on if you're, you know, if you're really into meat or not. So uh, for the question, they, you can add meat or not to the fried rice. Okay. Let's go ahead with the next one then. Thank you, thank you, excellent, excellent job. And now we have girls, and they're gonna make uh, a very interesting dish, I would say. It's called toast pudding. And uh, you may begin. What do you need? What do you need? What do you need? Salt. Salt. They need salt. So please find salt for them. And you may begin. I think we can find the salt. We have our salt too. Go, go, go. As much salt as you need. Go. Hello, everyone. Today we will make toast pudding. Three, two toast glass, three, four, and six. Two cups milk, two eggs, five or six raisins. One tea, one teaspoon salt, two teaspoons icing sugar, one tablespoon sugar. Let's begin. Preheat the oven to 350 degrees. Here. Cut the sauce to three fourths inch thick. They're actually dicing up the the uh, thick toast. That's a lot. a lot for meat, eggs. Yo. So we have eggs and milk together. Need more eggs? <laughs> and I've heard these girls have been practicing this uh, particular dish for a couple of weeks, right? Yeah. 
Sugar and salt. Turn them until melts. Meanwhile, fill a baking dish with cooked toast. Pour mixture over toast. Bake for 30 to 45 minutes until edges of toast have grown. So you can put that into the oven right now? Yes, okay. And they have already preheated the oven. When it's half done, take it outside. So actually, in real time, you have to wait for 30 to 45 minutes, but they've already made one so that we wouldn't have to wait. So here, would you like to take that? Hey, to the, ma the magic of television. <laughs> <laughs> so this is like virtual real time. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to pose for uh, photos that if you like. Yeah. And now we will take questions. Yeah, yeah go ahead. It's delicious toast pudding. Uh, we have a question. Go ahead. Yes, go ahead, India. Okay, so what is the secret behind all of you being so thin and fat, uh, fit, I'm sorry, even though you eat a lot of noodles and carbs? So what is the secret behind what? How can they stay so thin? And fit. They want to know why you're so fit. So thick? Fit. Physically fit. Oh, okay. How do we eat so much high level things? Why do we all have to be so thin? Okay. Yeah, I had to translate that. Okay. So they exercise a lot. They, there's a lot of you know physical uh, education activities that the students engage in every day. Okay, but uh, Mary, how often would you eat something like that? How often would you eat something like the to toast pudding? Pudding toast. Two days a week. <laughs> Two days a week. Oh, that yeah. precise. <laughs> wow. Okay. And she chews 32 times each spoonful. No, I just. What does it? <laughs> What does it taste like? Can you uh, describe how it tastes? So, what's the dish called? Pardon? What's the dish called? What's the name of the dish? Name of the dish. It, it, it's toast pudding. It's toast pudding and it tastes... It tastes... Tough is soft and... Sweet? Yes. And rich. Any other questions? India, have any more questions? Or Brazil? Go ahead. Yeah, yeah we actually have a question. We Come couldn't in, hear in. you. We can't hear you. Okay. Did you have a question for us? Yeah, they, they couldn't hear the last answer, I think. Oh, uh, they said that the, the uh, dish tastes sweet 
and uh, soft and rich. Okay. Very good. Yeah. Yeah, we have a question. Go ahead. Okay, so Brazil has a question. Basi, yeah. I, I think India, oh, India does. Brazil. Okay, India. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, uh, do you find Indian food in Taiwan? You find Indian food in Taiwan? Do we have Indian food in Taiwan? Yes. Oh, yeah. Indian yeah. food yes, all have over. Yes, we have Indian restaurants here. Yeah, uh, like... Do you do you find uh, biryani in your country? <laughs> you know biryani? Actually, uh, we we had an international student from India who uh, taught us how to make Indian curry uh, a few years ago. It was very very delicious. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> yes, we love Indian food. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So we have our last presentation. Okay. And before that, uh, we want to talk a, a little bit, a, a very short comment on food problems in Taiwan while they are getting ready. Go ahead. Go ahead. You will begin to take the quality and security of food seriously. There are always a lot of people uh, discussing about the quality and the security of birds in magazines, TV programs, and TV news. Now we are going to discuss the problem of food in Taiwan. The food scandal happened in Taiwan in 2014 and it really caused a severe panic in public. Gunter oil is refined from recycled oil, putrid food, and even litter cleaner. The appearance of gunter oil is similar to normal cooking oil, so it might be difficult for the consumers to tell the difference between gunter oil and the ordinary one. Most consumers for the well-known enterprise are a guarantee of their product quality. However, they don't know the biggest buyer of counter oil is famous than brand in Taiwan. Citizens in Taiwan are curious about the, the oil scandal and they, they believe the penalty of, <coughs> penalty of the oil scandal is too light. Wei Wei Zhong, the co-founder of Dingxing International Group, is only sentenced of sentence to two years in pre imprisonment. Hey, Mary, I think we lost your feed. Just a second, we'll try to get them back. Yeah, they, they're rebooting right now. They'll be right back on. I, I, go ahead. The, the people from uh, Taiwan will be right back. I really appreciate you guys staying long. That, and that was a very good presentation. That I really enjoyed the food security.
And thank you for the questions. Uh, while we're waiting on that, if it takes more than just a couple of minutes, we'll go to Brazil. Brazil has a few uh, presentations. But let's wait because they, they have another elementary school that they've waited to, to go. So I'll wait just a little bit. Now, India, how many people did you say are, are residential students? How many people live on your campus? Oh, can you please repeat the question, sir? Yeah, uh, how, how many people live on your campus residentially? Okay, residential, it's around 120, 130. Oh, wow. Do any of you guys live there? Hmm? Do any of you, are any of you resident? Oh, wow. How do you like living on, living at school? I love it in simple terms. Just can't describe it anymore. Oh, good, good. So where do you guys go to college? Where Here, you? the same campus, which that is the hostel side and this is the school block. So it is the same thing for us. Oh, wow. College is 11th and that that's really that's at so there's no real separation from elementary to high school age y'all in this everybody's in the same place yes okay. and then where do you go to university at university i'm still in my planning one more year to go for me so i'm planning yeah i know but where where will you there's mary right there okay good I am oh. planning for a liberal arts university in India itself. Oh, wow, that's good. Yeah. Thank you. Brian, you ready? Yes. Go ahead. Okay, go, go, go. I, I think you're on the gutter oil. Yes, uh, so finish the part on the food. The second dish, go ahead. Silly sons in Taiwan are. Mary, we can't see anything. Can you hear us? I can I can hear you now, but I can't I can see you now. Go ahead. Citizens citizens are furious about the penalty of the audio scandal. They believe the penalty is too light. When Chong, the co-founder of the Dixing International Group, is only sentenced to two year imprisonment and fine and only fine fifteen point five million NT dollars, people started to boycott the products of Dixing International Group and took to the streets to show their dissatisfaction of about the final judgment. Now we are going to introduce Taiwan's international, Taiwan's traditional sample and make fried rice noodle in, during the report. Today we are going to introduce Taiwan's main dishes. The traditional main dishes are quite important but more and more innovative one has been created. Traditional main dishes that we are going to introduce including thin bamboo cup rice, turkey rice, lamb noodles, minced pork rice, and fried rice noodles. And we are going to demonstrate how to make fried rice noodles. Thin bamboo cup rice is a common delicious food in Taiwan, and it is made of glutinous rice. In the past, the steam bamboo in the food that it is put in metal containers due to convenience. Turkey rice is a popular main dish in Taiwan. It's available in many stores. In Taiwan, everyone likes turkey rice. Turkey rice is often served with chicken stock, garlic, fruits, onions, and a slice of dried radish. We have a chance to give a famous video chat. This is da noodle. Da means shoulder boy in Taiwanese. Da noodle is a kind of food which originated in Thailand, Taiwan in 1895. And the inventor of it is Hong Yuto, who was a fisherman actually. When the weather was bad and wasn't suitable to fish, he had to sell something to earn money. So he invented this dish. The contents of this dish include 
the loss of housing is for us much harder, including black anger and shrimp. Beef food or soup refers to soup noodle with still beef, which is a snack ingredient. In the early times, Taiwan was an agricultural society. Some of the cows held normal rice field, the others to show respect and express gratitude to the cows. Some did not eat beef. Therefore, the history of Taiwan beef noodle is not very long. People who immigrated to Taiwan from China grew along this special dish. Now, the beef noodle has become one of the most representative food of Taiwan. Minced pork rice is a common main dish. People in northern Taiwan eat rice with chopped pork, which tastes a bit easier. People in the south eat it with ground pork. A lot of types of meat are different. Both go well with soy sauce. People also eat it with rice, bamboo shoots, or pickled radish. Fried rice noodles is a well-known dish in Taiwan. It's served on a variety of occasions. For instance, it's essential in many kinds of foods. Today, we're going to show you how to make your own fried rice noodles. To make fried rice noodles, you need the following ingredients. So, do we have electricity? Okay, go ahead, go ahead. 100 grams of fried rice, fried rice noodles, 30 grams of fried garlic, 15 mushrooms, okay. 100 grams of carrot, 300 grams of pork, 300 grams of cabbage, 2.5 grams of salt, 70 milliliters of soy sauce, 35 milliliters of black rice vinegar, and 15 milliliters of vegetable oil. Direction. First, soak the mushrooms in hot water for 10 minutes, then put them aside. Save the water for later use. Second, uh, put Cut the pork into pieces and pickle them with soy sauce and plant rice vinegar. Third, with some. So, what are we waiting for the pot to heat? Okay. Put the noodles into hot water for three minutes. First, add 15 milliliters of vegetable oil onto the noodle. Stir the noodle, noodle with the oil to prevent it from sticking together. Fifth, fill the pot. Add fried garlic and onions. Wait until the onions are salted and add carrots and pork. Six, serve by the previous content together with soy sauce, black, black rice vinegar, water, and mushrooms that were just soaked in the water. Seven, seven, uh, put, into, put the rice noodles into a pot and use the chopped beef to stir them evenly. And add, add the cabbage. And when the cabbage is thoroughly cooked, add 2.5 of them, 2.5 grams of salt, and spread it on the top. Then the dish is ready. That's all. Thank you. Okay, so uh, we've already pre-told you the steps, and now we'll begin the cooking steps. So first, mm -hmm. what? Are we... oil. Adding oil. What kind of oil is that? Uh, perhaps you can read it for us. <clears throat> yeah, virgin olive oil. Olivia oil. Okay. Yeah, olive oil. Okay, right. Extra. Okay, go ahead. Continue. So you're evenly uh, trying to uh, distribute the oil on the pan. Is that enough? Okay, go ahead. 
Let's see. And mushrooms. Okay. Stir it. So we are uh, stirring the mushrooms and trying to bring out the flavor with the oil that was just uh, added. Yeah. And then what's next? Then the flavor was Yeah. Then meat. Meat? Is that pork? Yes. Onion. Perhaps when you're adding something, you can uh, tell us what you're adding. Carrot and onion. Yep. Thank you. And uh, how long does it take for you to? Would it take to? Two or three minutes. Yeah. So, like most food that is stir fried in Taiwan, you will see that um, they will have the uh, three ingredients uh, stirred up first before the actual main uh, staple is placed into the pot. Or pan. What are you adding now? Fried garlic. Fried garlic. Fried garlic sauce or something like that. Okay. Fried garlic. 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 Fried garlic. Water, a bit of water because it's going to stick to the pan. Okay. Wow. And, and what are we waiting for now? For the food to get cooked? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so uh, we just added a bit of water so that the ingredients don't stick to the pan and we're waiting for the water to blend in with the other ingredients. Okay, so we just turned up the heat so that we can uh, allow the water to seep in with the previous ingredients. And what's next? Cabbage. cabbage. So shreds of cabbage are added.
So perhaps it would be a good idea to uh, read out the steps or to tell us the steps while you're cooking. Ooh. Right. Okay. I just add some cabbage. Yeah. And then I'm going to add some soy sauce. And our soy sauce again, remember we had soy sauce in our previous dish. How much? Seventeen milliliters. Seventeen milliliters? Yeah. That much? Wow. Oh, okay. And then stir it. Stir it. So this makes about how many servings? Probably three. I would say three servings. Yeah. Yeah. If a person wants to uh, have this as a main dish, uh, this would serve three persons. Hmm. Hmm. But and for it, me, yeah. just one. Oh, okay. <laughs> I am very hungry now, actually. Uh -uh. <laughs> and how long does it take to uh, make this dish usually? Usually 10 to 15 minutes. Not including the chopping of the onion and the vegetables, right? Yeah. Excluding that. Just stir it and fry it. It will take you 10 to 15 minutes. I will if you have to prepare the ingredients. 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 <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we want to add the. Uh, it will take you longer time. Now we are going to add. No, no, no. Not yet. Water. So the water was. Uh, it the should cover the ingredients. ingredients. <laughs> right. The water was uh, the ones that we uh, saved from soaking the mushrooms a while before. Yeah. Right. I think that's enough water. Okay. Now we should add some. What's that? Huh? Okay. G. M S glutamate sodium GSM is that Michael is that GSM that the, the thing that we use the flavoring that we use for, you know, yeah that? it's it's uh monosodium glutamate yeah uh MSG monosodium yeah MSG it's uh a lot of people really really worry about that in your um many of the different dishes because it's not supposed to be really good for you well there's a revised edition of those now so uh the ones that we use are uh, after extracted from like for example a chicken wow so they're like natural and healthier one oh yeah yeah that looks really delicious and it smells really good <laughs> yeah i don't want you to knock the power off now you know yeah, we had to uh, <laughs> we had to make some. Uh, that looks really good. Because, uh, so we Hold that ready. shot right there a second, Brian. I want to take a picture. I've been putting pictures up on Facebook and Instagram the whole time. <laughs> We're on Instagram and Facebook. Okay, great. So we can see the smiling mothers and the, all the young kids. Just my phone's like. It's Korean, but it's archaic. How we have a magic? Oh wow, that looks so good. So the uh, procedure is quite different from uh, the way that things are made in uh, North America and South America, I would guess. Yeah, I would assume so. It's really strange, but we have a lot of people 
we have a lot of restaurants that make food, but they're not necessarily native people that cook it. If you know what right. I mean. They're not authentic. Yeah, yeah. I, I would I would put that nicely. Yeah, uh, you know, <laughs> they're not a authentic people cooking. And India just had to leave. So all we have is Brazil left. And Brazil, they'd be back in a second. I think they had to go, some of the kids had to go to uh, to the college class. Yeah, yeah. you want to see the, cook, the, the person, the chef cooking, wanted to say something? Wow, that is so good. Okay. So we're waiting for the final few minutes when the... Uh, the staple food, the uh, fried, the, the noodles, the rice noodles are soaking up the, uh, the water that was added previously. Now, Mary, the noodles, they can be all kinds of different things besides wheat too, correct? Besides, uh, you mean the, this kind of rice noodle? Right, uh, excuse me, rice noodles, my bad. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, can you get, I've seen zucchini noodles, I've seen vegetable noodles, I've seen other things too. Besides I believe use other kinds of noodles for substitutes, right? Right. Probably wouldn't taste as good, but. Okay, we're done. Yes. Okay, so uh, did you get a good, can you get a good yeah. look at the final production? Yes, I got a real good look. That is, that is very good. I'll take so one more picture. Uh, I think three or four, makes three or four servings. And now she's gonna, yes, she's gonna put it on a dish. So if you go to a food stand or a uh, food store, restaurant, uh, uh -huh kind of dish would be served on a dish normally. Okay, and how much would that cost at a food stand? Oh, how much would this cost at a food stand? Two or three US dollars a pin, yeah. Oh, wow. Is that a good deal? Yeah, it seems like you get an awful lot of food. <laughs> Can you see that, this a plate? Whoa. Yeah, right there, that's really good, thank you. <laughs> so, do you have any questions for us? Any Why questions, you? Brazil? Or how often would you eat something like that? Oh, and would you eat it for lunch or dinner? I mean, lunch or supper? How often do you eat this dish? Once a week or twice a week. Okay, and would it normally be a uh, noon meal or would it be like a evening meal? Can you eat it at noon, like for lunch or for dinner? Anytime. You want. Anytime? Okay. Usually lunch and dinner. Okay. Hey, did you have any questions, Brazil? Yes, I may have a question. Uh, what do you usually eat for breakfast? What do you usually eat for breakfast then? Bread, bread. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, anybody, anybody. Bread. Like what do you eat for breakfast? Uh, I usually eat bread for breakfast. You know, the breakfast uh, food here is kind of westernizing. So uh, a lot of students eat bread, you know, and ah. um, like things. Yeah. And in the past, there used to be more porridges, you know, rice porridges uh -huh. and bread sticks or things like that. But now it's, you know, people are globalizing, I guess. It's globalization and uh, everyone is getting more food from, especially we're much influenced by the Western culture. Is that good or bad? Is that good or bad? <laughs> Either good or bad. Either, it, uh, the students said it's either it's neither good or nor bad. It's just the you know. It, it may good. also be for convenience too. I think, huh? Yes, I also believe that. The fast but food the culture. It it, it has it's gotten real popular here in the states, and I don't know if in Brazil that they would actually go ahead and um, 
uh, prepare meals a week ahead of time, you know, and put them in little things. Do you guys do that? Anything like that? And put it in the freezer. Yeah. All right, we got India back. This is good. Yeah, people don't do that in Taiwan. They usually prepare food fresh. Okay. Well, I didn't know, but I mean, that would still be better than my highly processed food. Yeah, I think we got India back. Yeah, we got India back, and it looks like we have Albania too. If I know my people, but I see. The, that would be good. Okay, so we're taking final questions before we sign off. Uh, for yeah, today. any yeah. more questions for Taiwan? It's almost 10 p.m. I, and you guys stayed up and you were so good too. And we really appreciate the mothers and we appreciate the young people that, that cook and Mary's got a lot to look forward to in her future students. Yes, for sure. <laughs> okay, so y'all y'all have a great evening whenever and have a, a better morning tomorrow. But we Thanks. appreciate you guys so much. And then let's go to Brazil and uh, let the Brazilian people uh, present and then we'll have questions from India. Okay? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, you guys. Go ahead, Brazil. <laughs> Okay, Brazil, go ahead. We can't hear you, Brazil. Oh, I can see why it's mute. Hey. Now we can. Go ahead. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, no problem. No, no problem. Can you listen now? Yeah, we can hear you now. Fine. Okay. Uh, my name is Lucas. And my name is Pedro. And we will show uh, some uh, main dishes of Brazil. The first one is rice and beans. Uh, rice and beans is our staple food, and we have uh, this dish in, in our principal meals, uh, like lunch and dinner every day. And uh, it's the same that in English in England is potato. Have the staple food in Brazil? It's rice and beans. Okay. We eat as a accompaniment a farofa, crumbs, olive oil, and pepper and salt. Our farofa is made of cassava. Cassava is a root, and farofa is very common uh, in our main dishes. Cassava is a root, and it's very common in Brazil, and we can fry the cassava as uh, fries, uh, potato fries. Oh, okay. Now, the, the picture that you have up there, that would be like a cassava fry, like a potato, french fries? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, we are in southeast of our country, but uh, we have these dishes. It's tapioca. Tapioca is from northeast, and tapioca is made of cassava, too. And I have never tried tapioca, but my friend Pedro ever tried it yet. And it's very good. If you ever <laughs> came to Brazil, we, we have to try it. Yeah. Yeah, we have uh, some specific restaurants in our region that can we can found uh, uh, these dishes. And but today we can buy in the supermarket this this, this flour this flour. And but in North it's uh, made by hand. Uh, we can eat tapioca, south, south tapioca, or sweet. It depends the taste of each one. And uh, this is sun dried meat with cheese, uh, cheese with ham. This one is the most common. Everyone can do it at home. 
Oh, wow. Uh, banana with caramel or condensed milk. Strawberry with Nutella or chocolate. É isso, né? Feijão tropeiro. Feijão tropeiro is more common in our, our region. É, the ingredients are cooking beans, bacon, pork, salsage, sun-dried meat, pork crackling, cassava flour, flour onions, garlic, and eggs. É, we can uh, found feijão tropeiro in some sportive activities in stadiums when, for example, have a uh, football, football, huh? have soccer. Uh, we can eat feijão tropeiro. It's so common, or in some concerts or parks when we go out with friends, we can eat feijão tropeiro, or maybe we can eat it in our home. This is the tutu, and it's a paste made of beans. The, ingredient, the ingredients are black beans, pepperoni sausage, bacon, garlic, and olive oil, and the cassava flour. And the, it's very easy to do. You have to mix in a blended the beans along the broth that was cooked in the cassava flour. A salty, salty with garlic and salt, stir until thick, Decorate with tomato sauce and boiled eggs. Arroz de carreteiro or oh, rice. It's a. Um, uh, a moment. Uh, this story says about in the south of our country, uh, the drivers of carts couldn't travel with a lot of food and or prepare big meals uh, on road. For this, uh, this, uh, they choose the ingredient and mix everything on rice. It's more popular in our, in the south of our country, but we can uh, find this in our region too. It's so common. This one uh, calls escondidinho. I don't know the right translation for that, but it's common too. It's hide. <laughs> I don't know the exact translation. But the ingredients are sun dried meat, cooked cassava, and grated cheese. The recipe make cassava puri, braise with sun dried meat, and make a sauce of it. Put on glass container one layer of puri and one of meat in the, in the last layer of puri. Put grated cheese on top and bake. Vaca tolado. Como eu vou dizer isso? Eu não sei se há uma tradução. Como eu vou dizer isso em inglês? Cow in the mud. Cow in the mud. É como isso em inglês. Vaca tolada, na minha opinião, é a comida mais deliciosa. É muito aceita em dias calmos ou para convidar alguém em casa. Ingredients: the beef, rib, uh, cassava, parsley, and salt. Uh, the recipe, re recipe, recipe is braise the meat and the cooked cassava. Let it cook it well. Remove the bones from the rib. Add water slowly. Boil until broth become thick. This one called canjiquinha with costela. It's canjica with ribs. And the ingredients are corn broken into little parts. This corn calls canjiquinha here, pork rib, sliced tomato, and spices. This is some exotic, exotic dishes. And there is the oops, it's not right. This some there is this one is one of the exotic dishes. It calls buchada de bode. <laughs> and <laughs> from, uh, stuffed, stuffed goat's stomach. This uh, dish is very common at the north, at the, the north Brazil, east. northeast of the Brazil, but it's not common here uh, in your state. And I don't have courage to try it. <laughs> 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 the ingredients are viscera of a goat, stomach, intestine, liver, lung, heart, and the tongue. 
é, clotted blood of the goat, garlic and onions, lemon and olive oil, and you need a needle and thread to é, costurar? To, é, como é que fala costurar? To, to sew the stomach. And now the recipe. You can see that the stomach is sealed with the needle and the thread. And this has to clean our ingredients with lemon, season with salt and pepper, braise the viscera with olive oil, collect the blood and remove it from the fire, boil the whole stomach and fill with it the viscera. Then seal with needle and thread, boil plenty of salt and water and put in the stomach to cook for four hours. <risos> Farofa de bunda de Tanajura. This is not common. It's a very rare uh, dish. Uh, this, this is um, more common in countryside. We are in on this big city, but it's funny. <risos> I don't have courage to try it too. My my cousins have tried it yet, but I have never too. The ingredient is butter, chopped onion, garlic, a cup of tanajuras, cassava flour, salt and chopped, chopped parsley. Eh, tanajura, tanajura it's a giant, a giant ant. Wow. Instead, yeah. A uh, recipe is remove the wings, legs, and head with the sting of the ants. Leave only with the abdomen. In the saucepan, heat an oil and add enough salt. salt. When it's very hot, place the ants. They will pop on the swell. Let it fry until the peel become hard and crispy. Add manioc flour gradually. It's too well until it becomes a farofa. Yeah, it's like popcorn. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. This is the image of That's it. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. That that was a good one to end it on. I, I don't know. Uh, I, I I would hate to be the first person to decide you wanted to eat ants for some reason. It, some of the things that people decide to eat are just really very unusual. And one time, if we if we just went around the world and talked about unusual food, you would see some very eye opening uh, things. That was that was a very good job, guys. Uh, very very good. Thank you. Uh, it's going to be probably about thirty minutes for our next one, so we're going to go ahead and say goodbye from here, and uh, then we pick up Canada and Argentina in a little bit, but. Uh, thank you so much, and uh, your teacher there should be very proud of your hard work. That was a very good job. Thank well, you. Thank you for hearing. And you speak English very well. <laughs> you must learn from a very good master, huh? Practicing, practicing. Yeah, okay. Thank you so much. We'll see you guys later. See you next month. Thank you.